big part of taking care of your outboard engine is flushing it. But doing it right and knowing exactly what you're doing is really important to taking care of your engine properly. So we'll cover all that in this video. So there's either two or three ways you can flush your outboard engine. If you've got a bigger motor that's got a flush attachment on them, and this is often called a cold flush, you can do that. It's probably not the best way to flush the engine, and I'll explain all that when I break down how the engine cooling system works. But the other two ways is putting it in a bucket of water. That's probably the best way of doing it, or putting earmuffs on it. I'm going to cover all those here. So let's start with putting it in a bucket of water. According to the manufacturers, the best way to flush your engine is to put it in a big tub of water like this and run it for about 15 minutes. And that is a great way to flush your engine. But I never do it that way, purely because I have to take my foils off my cavitation plate just to fit it in the bucket, and it's a pain in the ass. So I just put the muffs on normally, but this is a great way to flush your engine. Flushing like this is very straightforward. Just make sure you've got enough water in the bucket to cover your water intakes and let the engine run for at least five minutes. And even up to 15 minutes is no problem at all. Give it a really good flush here. So the cooling system on an outboard engine is basically a series of water channels that travels around the engine to cool down the metal that gets heated up from the internal combustion system in it. So it's really important to run fresh water through those so that the salt and calcium and other deposits don't build up because when an engine gets hot and cools down it leaves the salt behind. So you can have a look at an engine here and this is an old engine that was never flushed before. This is the head and the head's one of the parts of the engine that a lot of people neglect. You have to run an engine for a little while when you're flushing it so that it warms up because the head which is the top part of the cylinder actually has a thermostat that needs to open and then water flushes through that once it's opened and that thermostat won't, won't open until about 60 degrees so if you just run it for a short period of time when it's cold the water's never going to get to the top of the head this part of the engine that we're looking at now you can look at this engine here this has got a clean cylinder head massive difference between the two you can see the water jets and stuff around the outside there now I've got a little mocked up diagram here, it's not the best diagram in the world, but it does show you the water flow through an engine when you're cooling it. So if you're on the muffs or something like that, it's going to come from the bottom of the engine. And that blue line is what I call cold water flush, and that'll flush around the cylinder and stuff like that. But to get to the head unit, it needs to go through a thermostat, and that thermostat won't open until it's about 60 degrees. So manufacturers want you to run an engine for about 5, 10 or 15 minutes so that that thermostat opens and the water can get through to the cylinder head as well. And that's really important. A little trick you can do, the pisser of a uh, outboard engine or the telltale, you can put your hand there and make sure you've got warm water running out of it. If the water's not warm, it hasn't got to the top of the cylinder head. Because that cylinder head gets so hot because that's where the ignition takes place, you'll only get warm water coming out of the pisser if it's at the cylinder head. So when it comes to muffs, they're all pretty much the same. There is one brand that does have the plug at the end there and that sends water to both sides of the muffs. And that's a pretty good brand and that's a great idea as well. But for me, I've just got these old muffs that just send water to one side. And these are quite small, but they fit over the water intake of my 30 Yamaha perfectly. And that's how you want them. You want a nice snug fit. You don't want any water intake sticking out. So this would be no good for my 70 horsepower on my next boat. I've got a more of a rectangle size mutt for them, but ideal for this one. I'll show you how they work. Now, the most important thing is to make sure that the muffs go completely over the water intake. So we'll whack them on. Make sure they're nice and snug over the water intake. Other side's the same. We'll plug the hose into it. Then I'll turn that hose on and we'll start flushing. And this is really important. If you can flush your engine as soon as you get home after a trip, or even better still, if there's a hose at the boat ramp, you can do it at the boat ramp, 
while your engine's still hot, it's going to get all of that salt out. See, when your engine's hot and then cools down, the salt deposits dry in the engine, and dry salt deposits is what clogs up your engine. So flush it as soon as you can. Now on my 70 Yamaha, I've got a what they call a, a cold flush system. And all I do, and the Mercs and the um, Suzuki's, they all have some sort of cold flushing system. But on my, on my Yamaha, I just unconnect that hose and I'll get one of these little hose adapters here. And I can screw that into that little port there. Okay, so that's all screwed on. Now I've just got to plug my garden hose into it. And turn that tap on and just run fresh cold water through that for maybe about 15 minutes. The reason why I run it for a lot longer is because I'm not annoying the neighbours or anything like that. And I can just park the boat up near some garden, water the garden at the same time. But give it a good run and it's going to keep that engine nice and clean up top. Now the disadvantage of doing this type of system, it doesn't get to the bottom of the leg where the impeller is. Now your impeller is what forces the water up through the engine when it goes into those uh, water intakes on the bottom of the leg. And your impeller can get a little bit salted up. It's not really critical, but every now and again, I like to do a muff flush on this just to get that impeller nice and clean also. So once you've run it for about 15 minutes or so, disconnect your garden hose, take your connector off, and really important, don't forget to connect this back up again. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a cooked engine. So look, do that flush as early as you can. On your bigger engines, do a bottom or a muff flush every now and again, as well as the cold flush. Never run your engine when you're doing a cold flush. And if you've got a smaller engine, find a garbage bin or something like that, drop the smaller engine straight into a garbage bin full of water and just run it that way because you just don't have anywhere you can put the muffs on those smaller legs. Um.